Hello and welcome to this review of my Flag K Iori review. I've also seen it referred to as a KB101, but I have no idea where they got that name from. The Iori is apparently named after a popular King of Fighters character called Iori Yagami, which I've been told by a Chinese colleague of mine is also alluded to by the model number Ba Shun, which apparently means something along the lines of Eight God, which somehow links up with his character. This makes sense as the box has what appears to be a picture of Iori on it, as well as a King of Fighters 97 stamp. This keyboard was a donation. The owner mentioned that it was not an expensive one, and yeah, you can kind of see that, but still, it's an interesting specimen, so thanks again, mate. The switches in this keyboard, which are very light, very tactile, clicky switches, appear to be undocumented despite being in a modern keyboard, even if it is an obscure one. The insides and the mold markings correspond exactly to those of Zhang Min KSBC switches, but as far as I know, those were never produced in a blue slider variant, nor in this waiting. Zhang Min KSBC are four tab Alps clone switches, most well known for coming in early Philco Zero and Ducky keyboards, but that otherwise not very common. There are other modern clicky Alps clone switches with a blue slider exactly like this, namely Taihao APC Blue and Datacomp Blue switches, but APC switches use a different stationary contact and have different mold markings, and the Datacomps are made with the old forward electronics tooling used to make Alps SKBM simplified switches, so almost all the parts are quite different actually. Therefore, I tentatively assign them as KSBC Blue in the video title until I can make a more definitive assignment. Zhang Min are one of the few remaining modern Alps clone switches, and I'm not even sure they're still being made as of today. Back in the 90s, everyone and their dog were copying Alps switches, but nowadays most clone switches are based on Cherry MX, as those are more widely known right now. The switches are was often referred to as a mantis foot clone based on the shape of the click leaf. The alternative is a type of wide steel click leaves that were used by Alps themselves. In my experience, the wider steel leaves tend to give a better feel and sound, but these ones have a very unique feel that's unlike almost anything I've ever felt in an Alps type switch. The only thing I've found that's even remotely similar in feeling is this unknown red and black Alps clone switch, which I've been trying to track down for a while. However, these red and black clones are much more tactile yet even than these blue Zhang Min switches. Although Zhang Min's specs for the KSBC switch indicate a 60 gram operating force, that can't be right in this case because these are very light indeed, so I'm guessing they're just a custom extra light version of KSBC. The switches feel very tactile and consistent, but cheaply made, and the wobble is extraordinary. Normally I don't really care too much about wobble, it's actually pretty damn irrelevant most of the time in my opinion, but even I found it noticeable on this keyboard. Look at this, it's just incredible. The keyboard actually rattles when I shake the damn thing, listen to this. The extreme lightness might have been intended to simulate a light clicky switch like Cherry MX Blue. Alps style clicky switches are usually somewhat on the stiff side. But that said, while these switches have a nice, sharp, tactile feel, the weighting is a little bit on the scan side in my opinion. I'm just not sure Alps style switches were meant to be this light. Now, on its own, that wouldn't be the end of the world, really, just a minor subjective weighting dislike. But unfortunately, there is also a major technical issue with the design of these switches. No, they don't chatter or go dead after a while or anything, at least I didn't get any of that. No, the problem is that the switches actuate way, way before the tactile bump. And with the switch this light, that's really a problem. I mean, during typing it wasn't that big a deal, although it was pretty easy to trigger this spacebar with just the weight of my thumb. But during gaming, this was, quite frankly, absolutely intolerable. I started accidentally moving when I was trying to stand still, moving diagonally when I was just trying to go forward, or doing all manner of things I wasn't intending to do just because they forgot to sync the click leaf with the contact one. I mean, geez, this is pretty basic stuff here, guys. After a little more over a week in total, I just couldn't take it anymore. I was just completely fed up with it and switched to a different project. And switching back to it recently didn't exactly thrill me, if you know what I mean. 
Overall, the switches themselves are okay. A little bit on the light side, maybe, but otherwise not bad. I'm still debating to myself whether I prefer these or Cherry MX Blue, but the actuation point mismatch definitely kills it for me, and even sticking in a stiffer spring won't fix this problem. The keyboard model itself appears to be rather obscure, I can find very little about it. Flat K, said to be a Taiwanese manufacturer, have made some other models as well, which are also not that well known, but this one takes the cake, which is rare for what's clearly a modern keyboard. Earlier models of this keyboard, or just different ones, I don't know, appear to have come with a White Alps clone instead, which someone also described as very light. A product page of a red case version with these switches, which looks like the keyboard that's actually on the box, by the way, complete with the same white switches, describes these as The handle is in the free state after a lock. This design can handle pressure, but I can't open the door. The effective protection of the lock body parts, not were marred by violence. So at least that's all cleared up then. It's got what I can only refer to as an interesting colour gradient on the keycaps, which, by the way, are thin lasered ABS, and I think some of them might have been infilled later as well. Yeah, it's definitely an interesting look. Quite difficult to read the legends at times as well. Also, you might be wondering why there's a piece of masking tape over the num lock light. It's because the LEDs are extremely bright and really quite blinding when they're shining, even from the side. It's a bit hard to gauge by camera, I guess, but this is what it looks like. Even with the tape, it's very luminous, but at least it's bearable. The build quality is easily the worst of any Alps based board I've ever seen, even worse than the Tai Hao Fame board I reviewed ages ago, if you want to count that one. It weighs only 750 grams, roughly the same as this HP Rubber Dome keyboard, and it doesn't even have a mounting plate at all, not even a plastic one, it's just PCB mount. Which I've never seen before on an Alps type keyboard, they're always plate mounted. It flexes unbelievably, which makes sense, as there is nothing in the keyboard to give it any rigidity. And it's so bad that even the switches move when you flex the board. I mean, look at this. Christ on toast with butter and marmalade. Who thought that this was in any way acceptable? This is an affront to the term Alps-like. This is possibly what annoys me most about the keyboard. It's getting kind of irritating to see how many commercial attempts to make an Alps-style keyboard turn out to be so half assed the switches have a nice tactile feel, but the weighting is strange, let's put it like that, and the actuation point mismatch is something that even a child would detect in the earliest stages of testing. So the switches just don't work in gaming at all because it's far too easy to actuate them. I mean, are these really supposed to be representative or even similar to complicated ALP switches? Is this the best they can do? And how about the crappy build quality of the keyboard? I mean, this thing has the structural rigidity of a BLT sandwich, or in Imperial units, a PBJ sandwich. Is this supposed to, in any way, reflect the build quality of a Northgate, Zenith, AT101, or any of the other classic Alps keyboards? Heck, even Focus keyboards were built better than this. Overall, the keyboard just feels like a bit of a cop-out. I mean, as everyone will know, I'm a big fan of Alps keyboards, and I'd love to see them remade and laud any steps taken towards their resurrection, but this, this just isn't good enough. If you're going to do Alps, do it right, you know. I mean, it's not completely without its merits. Again, the switches don't feel half bad, just a tad bulky and too light for my taste. But this keyboard in its entirety, I don't think I can recommend it. That's it for this review, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.